Have you ever danced with the devil dinosaur in the pale moonlight? Hey everyone, welcome to Princess Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to season 2, episode 12 of Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. So I still haven't heard anything about when more episodes are coming at this point. I'm actually getting pretty worried. Because if we have to wait until like February, because cause remember, season 1 debuted in February, season 2 debuted this February. It's like, if we're going to have to wait till this coming February 2025 for just the second half of season two, that's insane. Um, wouldn't be the first time Disney screwed over one of their shows, but, you know. We'll see, I guess. Um, but based on the cold open, you've probably surmised that I have seen the title of this episode. And mind you, the reference I made was from Batman 89, uh, the Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson Batman. But the title of the episode is actually a song reference, Dancing With Myself, which um, I think is David Bowie. I it, let, let me check just to be safe. Dancing with myself. Oh no, Billy Idol. Wrong Billy. I got the wrong Billy. Um, or wait, wrong Billy. What am I talking about? Uh, I, I, as David Bowie is not a Billy. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is going on with me right now. Um, I'm going crazy apparently. Uh, you get to see that live and on camera. <laughs> I don't know why I said wrong, Billy, there. I don't know, like, what I was thinking. Um, I'm not tired. I'm not on drugs. I, I genuinely don't know. Um, but either way, yeah, Billy Idol, not David Bowie. I don't know if I was, con if my mind thought, of, like, Bowie, Billy, and somehow... I don't know. Either way. Either way. Um, luckily, it doesn't tell me too much about this because, like, dancing and music and stuff is just a common part of this series. Dancing with myself, like, just as a phrase, as an idea, doesn't really say much. It, it could mean a lot of things. It could mean... Pretty much nothing. <laughs> it's it's genuinely hard to say. But we'll see. We'll see what it ends up meaning. We'll see how it ends up going. Um now a bigger thing I want to bring focus to here before we get this started. And I'll talk about this in the afterthoughts again as well. There are only two more episodes after this in what's currently released of the season. Episodes 13 and 14. And you guys know, if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, that a lot of times whenever I'm ending a season, or at least ending what's released so far, a lot of times I like to do the final two episodes together. It's kind of like this finale thing. So the question is, will I be doing that with Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur? I kind of haven't decided yet. Because the thing is, I don't know if they're connected. I don't know if it's like a two-part finale kind of thing, even though it's not the finale of the season. I don't know. And I'm going to see like what this episode has in store for us, and maybe that'll help me decide. Which is why we're going to talk about it in the afterthoughts as well. But I, I'm not sure yet wh what to kind of expect going into it next week. Or if I 
if that's really something I'm going to want to do. Because again, I don't know if it's a two-part finale. I don't know if it's like, if, if it's needed for that. So, if it's a two-part finale, I would like to do that, for sure. But if it's not, then it's kind of up in the air. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens in this episode and see if that, like, maybe helps, like, orient things a little bit. Like, I, I might be able to just, like, see where it's going, if this, like, leads into something. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But for now, I think I'm going to just um, get into this episode and see what it gives us. See if it gives any kind of clue as to what's to come next. Or if it's just, you know, more setup. <laughs> or, or rather more, um, not set, not set up. I can't, I, 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 I don't know what I'm saying today. I'm saying all the wrong words. More, um, uh, episodic stuff, I guess. Uh, but let's get this going. Let's see what we have in store for this and hope for the best. Cutting in here real quick to remind you of all the awesome content we have on the channel. Between Monday and Friday, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions with two on Wednesday. We also have movie reactions every Saturday and Sunday. I do pre-record them during the week, but I upload them on the weekend. And don't forget all the gaming content we have both on this channel and the Secondary Princess of Gaming channel. We have Horizon Forbidden West every other day and Baldur's Gate 3 every single day on this channel while we also have Near Automata every Saturday on the other. And don't forget to click the link down in the description below to get to today's reaction. I redirect it just due to copyright reasons. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you want to see more awesome content such as this. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get on to the reaction. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, why did they turn into Muppets? I, 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 of all the things in this episode, like, that, that just felt so fucking random. Like, I, I get like during that moment when they're speaking and all, they're like giving like the, um, you know, standard go-to kinds of excuses and stuff like oh I, I i don't remember what they exactly said i was so focused on the fucking muppets but it's like they're just giving the standard excuses for like getting her out of there getting moon girl in there and then vice versa it, it's like is it supposed to be like they're puppeting lines is that supposed to be like the idea behind it it's just the 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 visual of that was so out of pocket so like out of nowhere because that's never been done before in this series they've had um they they've had a, um a lot of wacky references and, and animation moments and expressions and stuff but something like that has never been done and it's not the first time, like, they've had to make excuses for, you know, switching Lunella out with Moon Girl and stuff. That's, that's, that's not a new concept. But the Muppet change is. That, if that had been a thing, even just throughout this season. Like a recurring gag or something, that, then okay, that would have been fine. That would have been understandable, but... To just bring that out of nowhere? I'm not saying it's, like, bad. I'm not saying, like, it's a bad decision or, like, it hurts or ruins the show. I'm just fucking confused. <laughs> it just, it, it feels so goddamn out of nowhere. It doesn't even fit with the rest of the episode. Like. <sighs> I don't know. You have to, like, make some kind of, like, massive stretch to connect this with anything at this point. It just, it feels so entirely random. 
Like, all the anime references we get in these episodes honestly make more sense than this. <laughs> and that's a wild statement to make. Um, either way... So this episode centers around a school dance that Casey is in charge of organizing for some reason. Um, Lunella is invited to go by her friends, but they start getting dates and she's feeling left out. She feels like basically everybody, because everybody else is getting dates, she has to as well. Otherwise, she doesn't fit in, she's not as cool as them. And she doesn't belong there. It, it, it's kind of like this um, this feeling of seclusion. When everybody else has something happening around you, whether you're ready for that yourself or not, you have this innate desire to engage in it. And this is very much a real thing. It's, it's a psychological thing that most people go through. There's always exceptions, of course. But it's it's basically the idea of following the crowd. Of, you know, just doing what other people do because you want to fit in. And a lot of times, it's not something like you necessarily are trying to do, but kind of like something that you just actively choose to do because your mind is telling you you should. And, and sometimes when you realize you're doing that, you're like, why the hell was I doing this in the first place? And, and I, like, like I said, obviously in this episode, it's centering around Lunella, you know, getting a date to the dance and f trying to fit in by following the crowd. And this can take shape in a lot of or this can take a form in a lot of different ways in real life as well um you know the entire idea of like even like kids trying alcohol or cigarettes or stuff like that because other kids are doing it or because they see their parents doing it so it's like they they feel left out if they don't they have to try it it's like the cool thing or play even like kids playing like um, M-rated video games because they see other people playing or they heard, heard like, oh, my, uh, my parents let me play an M-rated video game. It's like, oh, we gotta play too. We gotta play this game too. It's so cool. It's the hot game right now. E everybody's talking about it. It, it. It's this fear of missing out, basically. FOMO. You, you automatically, psychologically want to engage in something that is popular or that you see other people around you taking part in because you don't want to be an outlier. You have this innate feeling that if you're an outlier, if you're not engaging in this same stuff, then they're not going to like you. You're not going to fit in. You're going to be an outcast and nobody wants to feel like that. So your brain kind of tricks you into thinking that you have to engage in this stuff too, even if you're not interested in it. Lunella made a point in this episode that she was not interested in dating. Like, it's very clear she has a crush on uh, Marvin and everything. But she's not actually interested in dating because, as she put it here, she's a kid. She's super young still. She's not ready for that. She's not comfortable with it. She's not at that point in her life where she's ready for that yet. And we see that other friends of hers were the same. And they only accepted these dates because they themselves thought it was something they had to do. But we also see the other side of that. Some of her friends are like super into it. They're super into the lovey-dovey dating scene. It's entirely for them. But it also makes a point of Lunella saying, and that's all right. But we're not at that point yet. We're not ready for that. This is an extremely mature, wonderful way to express this. Because you have so many of these shows that, let's be honest, are marketed to kids where the main characters are like young teens, like 13, 14 years old, sometimes even younger as 12. And... 
they always kind of force in these romances. And sometimes it works out really well. Sometimes the romance is really cute, really well written, etc. Sometimes you get Star vs. the Force of Evil. Where they force a romance that is so actively bad for the characters, does not work because they don't have any romantic chemistry, and every other relationship that is shown in the series is far better and healthier than the one that they end up uh, confirming in the end. But I could rant on that for a long time. I have ranted on that for a long time. I'm not going to... I'm not going to take up your time with that again here. The point is, a lot of these cartoons, again, marketed towards kids, force this idea of love for kids who might not be ready for that. And so a lot of kids, because of this media and because of, you know, influences around them in their real life, think that they have to get involved in love and stuff before they're ready, and it starts creating these unrealistic and unhealthy expectations. On top of that, it it stunts their ability to understand what a good relationship even is, and can cause some notable issues in their perception of love and relationships as they grow up. To not only acknowledge that you're not ready for that, but to do so in front of others who you feel are kind of showcasing that that very thing that you're not ready for, for a kid is super brave. Kids are full of insecurities. And to open up in that kind of deep way in front of others that, let's be honest, you look up to. Lunella looks up to her friends greatly, even though she's the smartest of the group, the most tech savvy and everything. She looks up to them because, let's be honest, Lunella has a shit ton of insecurities. Even if it's not directly and constantly stated, like... You can read between the lines, believe it or not. This series actually does really well at the show-don't-tell aspect of that. And you can very much see a lot of her insecurities. I mean, some of it is more spoon-fed to you through certain episodes that focus on that. But you also see a lot of it just by watching the series and seeing her character. And one of her biggest insecurities is fitting in. She loves that she's a genius. She absolutely owns that shit. But fitting in has always been one of her biggest insecurities. And we see that pretty much every time she interacts with this friend group. Especially, like, when she first started interacting with them. She wanted so hard to be a part of this group, to fit in with them. Because she looked up to them so much. So her telling them to their face that she's not ready for this, that she's not ready to be like they, like she perceives them to be, she's being open and honest about her insecurities in a way that a lot of kids aren't able to do. And this is very much speaking from experience here. Like I said in the reaction, I never went to a school dance. I never even got to that point, whether I went alone or not, I never even went. And part of the reason was insecurities over the fact that I never had a partner. I never had anyone to go with. And the couple people that I did ask out during my time in school rejected me for one reason or another, which only added to my insecurities and self-confidence issues. Um, so that didn't help. But like whenever dances came up, it's like it wasn't even just like, yo, oh, you have to pay to buy a ticket, which by the way is fucking stupid. Like you're gonna you're gonna force these young kids to pay to get into this dance that you like 
through media and everything kind of force this idea of importance upon it's like do you understand how much that fucks up children to do that that's that's not healthy <laughs> that's a conversation for another day though um but it's it wasn't even the 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 paying for the ticket thing i didn't feel comfortable going to the dance without anyone without a partner without a date because that's what society the people around me and media even made me believe that i would be an outcast that i would be actively mocked and laughed at if i went so i didn't even go i i never went to any school dances prom homecoming none of them and my insecure insecurities regarding those and regarding you know dating and whatnot all piled up and like kept like making me less <laughs> able to just speak out about things to e share my insecurities or to even ask people out after a certain point because it's like I, I, I there's all this failure that it stacked up all of this insecurity all of this anxiety and, and after a certain point, it's just like, I couldn't take it anymore. I was just so done with it. Because I didn't want to be rejected. I didn't want to be laughed at. I didn't want to be seen as lesser in any way. The fact that we, like, put this kind of pressure and expectation on children is insanely upsetting to me not only because i've been on the negative end of it but just seeing and hearing about stories stories even if they're not in even if they're not like based on a true story or stuff there's even stuff within media that talks about this you know what i think of and, and Venom, you might really enjoy this uh, comparison. You know the Ballad of Sarah Barry? The, uh, it, it's from some musical or something. I reacted to an animatic for it. Um, you know, the song that is excessively depressing and upsetting and makes me really fucking, like... Like, pissed off, but also, like, just wanting to curl up into a ball and do nothing for a while i didn't want to just say depressed again but depressed <laughs> the song that is literally about a teenage girl who has so much pressure and expectation put on her that it literally drives her to insanity and she becomes a serial killer because her mind breaks from the pressure a girl who ends up being put in an insane asylum at the end after this killing spree because of what others did to her because of what all these societal familial and um uh even friendly relations have done to this poor girl like the the, the thing is i don't think like that's based on a true story or anything but shit like that has absolutely fucking happened in real life. Maybe not to necessarily... Well, it has happened to that degree. Um, but even when it doesn't, it's still really fucked up to put that much expectation on a person that it breaks their mind. That it fucks them over. Mentally, emotionally, it, it, that can destroy kids. The problem with that is like you're not like fully developed in terms of your mind until you're like what early mid 20s something like that these kids are still developing they're still like figuring so much out and this kind of pressure is just not good for them in any way shape or form it destroys young minds and it completely warps their perspectives on so much it's it's such a dangerous disgusting 
and just terrible thing that we kind of see as normal in our society. And yeah, it pisses me off. Because kids shouldn't have to be worrying about shit like that. And it's like on top of all of that shit, on top of the societal shit with the idea of romances before they're ready or, you know, all the pressures of being, like, you know, the best of all these dances, of having to win homecoming king and queen, of um, the expectations the schools put on them to get, like, the best grades possible because all the schools care about are how well their test scores are perceived by the state. They don't actually care about what the fuck they're doing to the kids and how this sets unrealistic expectations for the real world. The expectations of their parents, it's like, you have to go to a good college. You have to be the best for our family. You have to uh, have three kids and a, a, a great house and a great car and a perfect marriage. It's like, all of these fucking expectations are destroying children. Constantly. And it's just like, this society is so fucking warped that we see this shit as normal. And this is, this is a big fucking thing for me. Like, I, I get pretty protective when it comes to kids and I get really pissy, um, really pissy when kids are not just put in danger but are threatened in any sense of the word. And that includes, like, with stuff like this. Because it's just... It's cliche, but kids are the future. They're literally the future of our world, and we need to take care of them and make sure that they grow up in a way that is healthy, safe, and, you know good for them <laughs> and the ways we're fucking doing it is none of that and I mean this isn't even to account for all of like the dissension in like viewpoints and opinions on shit like politics that kids should not be hearing about and getting into at their age but are forced to because of society around them it's like again it's a cliche but fucking let kids be kids the schools need to stop acting like these test scores and everything are the end-all be-all of a child's intelligence because that's fucking toxic as hell parents need to stop putting all this pressure on them they need to stop putting pressure on each other because of what society forces them to believe they need to do. And we need to just let them enjoy their lives for a little. Like, yeah, get them ready for adulthood. But we don't even do that. We put all this pressure on them and don't even get them ready. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And this, this has been talked about a shit ton, but there's so many things that should be a requirement in schools, in high schools specifically. Um, like, learning to drive, driver's training, should be a free mandatory part of school. It should be an actual class in school. But on top of that, um, home ec should be absolutely a requirement. That's more important than most of the math you learn in school. Like 90% of the math you learn in school, you'll never use outside of school unless you go into a field that specifically requires it. And at that point, it should just be in college as part of the, you know, as part of being taught for that field. But most of the math like most people will never use outside of school. So why do we have to teach that? Because it's a standard, because that's what society says. 
But you know, home ec, stuff that actually is important, learning to cook, learning to clean, learning to do taxes, you know, stuff like that that actually is useful for everyday life in the real world, stuff that literally everyone needs to learn to do. Oh yeah, we're not gonna teach that. We're not, we're not gonna see that as a priority. What? Computer literacy is more important than half the stuff you actually are forced to learn in school. Computer literacy in this day and age is kind of a necessity. Because computers are just everywhere and they're necessary for most facets of life. Most jobs involve computers, believe it or not. Not every one of them, admittedly, but most of them do. In 2024? Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it, it's so ridiculous. It's so sad what we force onto our kids. And, and not just, you know, the stuff that's unnecessary, but the stuff that, you know, fucks them up. And sorry for going on this long-ass rant and everything about all of this. Um, this has all stemmed from, like, only one portion of... Well, kind of all of the episode in terms of its theming. But specifically the one part of the episode with Lunella admitting she's not ready for this kind of stuff. And doesn't... Pretty much doesn't think it's fair that society's kind of forcing her to believe that. And to act on it at her age and stuff. And we even see that Marvin, though it's very clear, like, he has even more of a crush on her than she has on him. But even he's not ready for dating. Even he is shown to be extremely uncomfortable in this episode. Like, he's just not ready for that. He's a kid. He's a fucking child. Let them discover when they're ready for things. Because let's be honest, only the child is going to know when they're ready for something. <laughs> That's a thing a lot of adults need to learn too. A lot of adults think like, oh, because they're adults, they know better, which is fucking ridiculous as hell. Um, but a lot of adults think that. It's like, oh, we're adults. Our brains are fully developed. We're wiser. That automatically means that uh, we know what's best for, for our children or for just kids in general. And it's like, no, you fucking don't. I'm sorry, but fuck off with that bullshit. The only person that knows what's good for anyone is themselves. The only person that knows what's best for me is me. The only person that knows what's best for you is you. Child A the, is the only person that knows what's best for them. Child C, the only person that knows what's best for them. And that's going to change. It's going to change, like, what's best for them is going to change as they grow, as they learn more about themselves and figure things out. Which is why, by the way, this is completely, like, not related to pretty much anything in the episode, but it's related more to what we're discussing here. When people say, like, leave the kids alone, let them be kids and everything, but also use that as an excuse to say like oh don't let the kids be queer in any way it's like for example it's like oh it, let the kids be kids leave the kids alone don't force them to be trans or gay or lesbian or whatnot it's like bitch no one is forcing that fuck off with that shit no one is forcing your kids to be trans if a kid comes out as trans it's because that's what they feel that's what they know themselves to be not because their parents told them they were trans, no. The most their parents might have told them is what the word trans is and what it means. The kid is the one who had those feelings. If a kid comes out as trans or a kid comes out as gay or bi or asexual or anything, that's because that's what they are feeling. The entire let the kids be kids argument should not be used for bullshit like that. Because let the kids be kids should also always, always apply for letting the kids figure shit out themselves 
and sexuality, gender, all of that is something that everyone should figure out for themselves, that no one else should be able to tell them who they are in regards to that. And these people who are saying this shit just think that, like, straight, um, cisgender, all of that is just the default setting. Like, it's like, oh, that's just who you are, and if you're forcing this other, if, 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 if the kid is expressing themselves as gay or bi or trans or anything, that's not the default, so that means that someone must have forced that idea onto them. It's like, no! That's not how anything works. But, you know, these people learn all of their science and shit from the internet and whatnot. They can, The least trustworthy source. They don't listen to the actual scientists who, you know, are, you know, trained and studied to know this shit, to learn this shit. It's like, no, they're just going to go on um, some random Facebook post and take some random dude at at his word rather than actually you know do any critical thinking or anything because that's how that's how society fucking is right now and it's pathetic but yeah sometimes you're just not ready for things and you feel almost forced into it because of what society expects from you And I went through a lot of that myself. There was a lot like growing up that I did and was into or believed because society forced that on me. Whether from the people around me, my parents, my church, um, media, force these certain specific thoughts on me, these certain specific mindsets and beliefs and all of that. And I followed along like like a puppet, I guess. I guess that might be where that comes into play. I don't know. I don't know. But it's like... I, I had to come to terms with the fact that I was being manipulated like that. And had to free myself as an adult. And not like a new adult, not like 18 years old. Like I was well into adulthood when I really started to discover how much I'd been brainwashed and fucked over by this kind of system. And it took a lot to kind of undo that conditioning. It, it took time. It took effort, and I discovered a lot about myself through this. I've talked about this plenty on the channel, but it's how I discovered my, uh, my sexuality, which has evolved throughout the years in various ways because I've continued to discover more about myself. It's how I discovered myself as trans and eventually non-binary as well. It's it allowed me to just be me, but it took time and effort, and it didn't happen all at once. It, it it happened over the course of years because of how I was raised as a kid and how I was treated, how I, these expectations that were put on me, these beliefs that were put on me. There's just so much manipulation, so much mistreatment, so much expectations put on these poor children. And shows like Owl House, like Amphibia, like this one, dare to challenge that status quo dare to say to its audience the kids who are you know marketed as its main audience th these shows dare to say you can make your own decisions you don't have to follow the crowd it's healthier safer and better for you to be your own person and discover when you're ready for things 
And that's why the that's why a lot of these shows get canceled. Let's be honest, because they're actually like not speaking down to these children, but speaking up to them, treating them as actual people, and acknowledging that they have their own, you know, sense of self. That they're their own people can make their own decisions, and that no one else knows better about them and their. Um, relationships, their beliefs, their ideals than them. That no one else should be allowed to determine any of that for them. And the adults in charge of these studios and whatnot don't like that. Because their entire jobs center around putting out this media that tries to that they want to deliver specific messages and ideals to kids it's brainwashing it's fucking brainwashing and the fact that no one sees this is so goddamn irritating well i mean i i can't say no one sees this clearly some people see this but look what's happened to this show now it, 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 it's it's like there's been no new episodes since what March and no no sign of new episodes coming we're only halfway through the season and we might not even get any more Ghost and Molly McGee ended prematurely it, they had to wrap things up too early Owl House was cancelled and they had to wrap things up too early so many of these shows get fucked over when they actually treat kids like fucking kids. When they when they don't speak down to them but treat them as people and speak up to them and actually like accept them as human fucking beings. People don't like that. They they want to have that control and they don't like it when kids are taught to not accept that control. Infinity Train is another good example, but um, that's, let's be honest, for a little bit more mature of an audience. That's that's more of a teen audience than a kid audience, but still applies, still applies. Um, it's like, it's just so many of these shows that handle things the best in how they talk to their audience get canceled. And, you, and, and yet they continue to put out brain rot like Spongebob as if it actually means anything. It's like shows that are just like pure, unadulterated, mindless brain rot. Because that's all they care about. Because it allows them to control what they think kids should think and act like and believe and whatnot. It allows them to look down on kids because of their unearned superiority complexes. It's it's gross, honestly. And I, I, I ranted about this for so long here because of how big of a deal this is to me, like I said. I, I, I have a sort of protective nature over children it's like i i really get pissy whenever i see or hear or just even acknowledge adults who are mistreating children in any way shape or form it's not it doesn't just have to be physical abuse or even uh emotional abuse it can it can be conditioning like this this shit's just as bad as that kind of shit because it fucks up the minds of these children. And that pisses me off. I guess it's kind of a mama bear complex. Uh, people have like used that kind of term before for this basic idea. I, I guess you could call it that. It's just... I just want to see... like 
these kids treated like fucking human beings and not like some kind of experiment. Is that too much to ask? Point of this rant is this show is too goddamn good. It's, go it's probably going to get canceled and I'm going to be really upset because we're not allowed to have nice things, I guess. Yep. Tell me in the comments below what you thought of this episode. Um, you don't need to rant as long as I did about it, though. <laughs> um, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, leave any thoughts down in the comment. I read all comments, so I'll see it. And if there's something I need to respond to, I will. For the time being, thank you, as always, so much for tuning in. I'm Connie. I'm signing off. See y'all next time. <laughs>